the Word of God, which is the foundation for living. From Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now, following these announcements, Reverend Reed. Good morning. I'm Eugenia Henry, a member of the Westminster Presbyterian Church family. Thank you for tuning in today to hear God's word. Please continue to join us each Sunday morning from 1015 until 1030 here on WATV 900 AM. And now, here are today's announcements. Our Sunday school begins at 9.30 each Sunday morning. Join us for a lively discussion. Mrs. Bonetta Wyatt is our superintendent. Our weekly Bible study class meets each Monday at 5.30 p.m. and is led by our pastor, the Reverend Joseph Reed. Please know you are always welcome to worship with us each Sunday. Our service begins promptly at 11 a.m. and ends at approximately 12 noon. Following a musical selection, the Rev.
Let us pray. Lord, help us to travel by your grace to that place within ourselves that you have prepared for us. Amen. Amen. We know from the from 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, that there were divisions in the church. And that Paul, in 1 Corinthians, was beginning to try to address those divisions. Tribute was being made to him and to Apollos and to all kinds of other gods. And the church was in a lot of confusion. So Paul was trying to make it very clear who they were in God and who God was in them. And our scripture, or text for this message, 316, like John 316, but this is 1 Corinthians 316, you should really remember it. Paul says finally to them, do you not know that you are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in you. Church secretary answered the phone and heard the caller say, I want to talk to the chief hog of this trough. <laughs> the caller was a rich farmer who was used to referring to people by animal names. Sir, she replied, that is no way to talk about the reverend. I hope Miss Williams would say that. <laughs> He is the pastor of this church. Sorry, lady, he said. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to donate $100,000 to the church. Quickly, she said, just a minute. Here comes the big fat pig right now. <laughs> Externally, we may allow others to call us what they want, depending on the benefit. <coughs> But God created us to be, but what God created us to be can only be experienced if we are willing to go on the inside of who we are in God and who God can be in us. Please join me as I speak to you on the subject, living in the temple within. Can you imagine? having this beautiful home created by God for you to be at peace, for you to experience tranquility, where you can have the kind of rest that you get on what kind of mattress is a good mattress? Somebody name one. Yes, yeah, I hear all Tempopedia. Yeah, those good mattresses. Not a cheap one. An expensive one. Can you imagine having a home all decorated, created just for you? You don't have to worry about the competition. Nobody else has one like you got. God don't duplicate. He don't replicate. He don't make the same copy. He don't copy. So your home is unique. You don't have to worry about it. But we got to live in it. We live in the temple within, watch this, by moving beyond worship, beyond words, beyond the good music we've heard this morning, and we have heard some good music from our choir. We move beyond worship, words, and song by taking small steps to realize God's presence and practicing something that you hear me talk about a lot, supplication and meditation on a daily basis. Keywords, small steps, supplication and meditation. I want those to go together. So it's just two key points. Yesterday, most of you celebrated Valentine's Day. I did too. This day is the biggest in the flower industry next to what? Mother's Day. 
an estimated 257 million roses were sold. That's a lot of flower gardens, isn't it? We spent $2.1 billion on just flowers. The National Retail Federation said a record $18.9 billion was spent on Valentine's Day with the average person shelling out $142.31 for candy, flowers, jewelry, and a special night out, up from $133.91 last year. All of this love given primarily in the name of love, but to the outer layer, mostly to the body. While what lies within is least celebrated and even less explored. And that's the problem. Many of us who claim to know God fall short when it comes to living in the temple that God created us to live in. Just what is the shrine? It is the sanctuary where God can be found. Surely he's found in the world, but when you go within yourself, that's a special place. And it requires us to do two things. One, we must move beyond worship, words, and song. I didn't say exclude them. I said move beyond them to taking small steps toward God. Many people are deluded into thinking that they're going to heaven and that all they need to do is go to church on Sunday, at least go to church now. Give a few dollars every now and then. Do a little service work and call themselves a Christian. When I deliver a message or a sermon, many people say they heard the message. I heard you, Reverend. But mere listening to a good sermon cannot take us within ourselves. By only listening, words are gained, but not the truth of God. Truth and tranquility is found within and is only obtained when we set out on the journey ourselves. And watch this. Practice what we hear. If something is helpful, if something is helpful that is said, we think about it. But we have to move beyond our thoughts to taking the first step. A thousand scriptures or words are nothing compared to a single step taken on our own to a God. Do not worry that the road is long, and it is, but it's just 70, 80, maybe 90 years. <clears throat> For the longest distance is gained what? Step by step. No one can walk more than what? One step at a time. I've never seen people take two or three steps at a time. Some people may have a long step. But it's hard to take what? Two steps at a time. We are all equal in this respect. Only one step is taken at a time, but all steps together complete our journey and can take us a thousand miles within ourselves. And that, my friends, is where we have to go to find God. Second, the second way of living within the temple is through supplication and meditation. I've said this many times and we'll continue until we start a daily program of meditation and prayer. <coughs> I started to ask who's got that program already ongoing, but I'm not going to ask that question. 
Because this is the way to live in the temple within. Through emptying our thoughts and entreating God to help us cast light into the darkness of our soul. I heard a young man sit with a lantern on the outskirts of town. He wanted to claim a distant mountain. The night was dark and all he had to guide him was a lamp that barely lighted a distance of three feet. He calculated, he was a good mathematician, he, got, he calculated the length of darkness up to the mountain to be 10 miles and the light of the lantern in a distance of only three feet. So he divided 10 miles by three feet and sat down and gave up. Such a massive darkness, he thought, would be impossible for him to travail with just a small light. He sat down waiting for the dawn and then an old man came along. He had a smaller lantern in his hand. Why are you sitting on this lonely place at this time of night, son? He asked the boy. What else can I do, he said. The night is dark and I have to reach those distant mountains. All I have is this little lamp that hardly lights three feet ahead. How can I cover so much darkness with so small a light? You foolish boy, said the man. You do not have to cross all the 10 miles in one leap. Cross the first three feet with the light of the lamp and the lamp will light another three feet ahead. Then cross the next three feet and the lamp will light another three. The lamp will light your way as you proceed. You can navigate not only 10 miles, but 10,000 miles with the aid of a small lamp. Prayer is the lamp and meditation is the silence, the emptiness, and the tranquility that makes up the flame that lights our interiority. This light shines in the temple of the soul. Here's the point. We live in the temple within by moving beyond worship, words, and songs, and taking small steps with God. It is these small steps of meditation and prayer that light our way and gives light to the darkness within. Step by step, darkness is overcome. One small step and life reaches within to places unseen by our external eyes. It is there we find the soul that our temples was created to contain. And the church said, Amen. To the Word of God, which is the foundation for living from the Westminster Presbyterian Church, 20 6th Avenue Southwest, with Reverend Joseph Reed. And now until next time, let the church say, Amen.